Uh, we're going to go up higher. These are uh, this is our middle management, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, this proc here will update the pull vector control when you're switching from FK to IK. It will, for the given object, it will, the object being the uh, valid IK control, first thing it's going to do is it's going to call this proc to get the pull vector control. Then it's going to call this proc to get the pull vector marker for that pull vector control. And then we're going to use our copy translation script or copy translation proc to snap the pull vector to where the marker is. Our update IK control transforms. Um, again, it is uh, pretty much the same thing. We're going to have our IK controller, we're going to use this proc to get the marker, then we're going to oops, copy the translation and then copy the rotation and then zero out all the custom matters. And you can actually see here where I rimmed out a bunch of code where I actually did the copy manually and now I'm like I'm not following my own advice and so I rimmed that all out and just put those and if you think about it, if you just whack that See how much less code that is and how much easier that is to read? And especially since xform-ws-t, I mean, unless you know what you're doing, copy translation, that's a lot clearer. That, you know, um, that tells you what it's doing as opposed to you having to understand what the mail code is doing. Makes it much easier to read. This proc, we're going to cover this in the next video. This is one of the extra embellishments we've added to the script so we'll skip this one for now. Uh, the update the FK controls um, for the given control we are going to get the uh, IK controls and we will get uh, basically this is like if you have your IK controller selected and then uh, let me back up a minute Originally, this was going to be your FK control, or your IK control, and it was going to switch to FK. Uh, but the auto switch, uh, uh, the the script job, which we'll talk in a bit, uh, the selection had to be reversed. So what happens is it doesn't assume that it's an IK control anymore, and uh, it will return the IK handles from what you have selected, and then you it will return the IK controls from those handles. So if this is an IK controller, this step is a little bit redundant. Um, but it's put that way in case um, you're doing it the other way where you have an FK control and you need to s switch to IK kind of thing. And we'll see that when we uh, when we get the, uh, the procs up and running. But regardless, it's going to get a list of IK controls. The first thing it's going to do is going to get all your FK controls and for those FK controls, it's going to get all the rotations. It's going to turn the IK blend of your IK control off, and then it's going to reset all those rotations, just like we said we're going to do. And then this part is going to be covered in the next video. That's, again, one of those little embellishments that we've added. And that's about it. The next three procs are the... Um, these are the generals or the, uh, the the CEOs of the proc, whatever analogy you like to use. This proc here basically just calls the switch from IK to FK. This one handles the switch from FK to IK. So we have IK to FK, FK to IK. And then this one is the, the one proc to rule them all. What this does is it basically determines based on what is selected, which one of the procedures needs to be called. So this is like the president, and then these are the two generals on the field. And then this one says, okay, I got an IK control that's on. I need to call, I need to do the IK to FK switch. Or I'm an FK, I need to do the FK to IK switch. And that's it in a nutshell, so let's see how that works. If we source that script, and I'm just going to copy this right here, 
and put it here in the command line. So now my IK blend is on, so I'm going to move this around. I'm going to hit that. Try that again. Oh, because I got the pole vector selected. It doesn't work with the pole vector. It will work with the IK controller, but not the pole vector. Um, and that too could be something that you may want to, on your own, just mess with it. Because it shouldn't be that hard to add that functionality. I just never bothered. So, okay, now we're in FK mode. Bada bing, bada boom. And we switch again. Now we're in IK mode. And back and so forth. So it seems to be working pretty well. Now the last part we're going to cover on this video is, as you can imagine, this is not really quite the IKFK switching that we saw in the first video or what you might see a motion builder or max we have to call this command each and every time um, originally I had created it where it was all automatic and I'll show you how I did it in a minute but the animators actually turned out not to like that and they preferred to have a little button that they can click so they can switch when they wanted to switch not necessarily when they were grabbing the next controller so we actually kinda downgraded it to to being uh, something like that. We basically put a button on a shelf and you just go uh, click and then it does the switch for you. Um, however, originally it was automatic and I'll show you uh, how that was done in this last little bit. If you go to the fourth section, we're going to create what's called a script job. Now what a script job does is it basically hangs around in the back, you know, uh, kind of out of the way, kind of like the Smoky Man from the X-Files or something like that. just kind of hangs back there. And it will wait for a certain event or condition. What event or condition? Well, there's a huge list of predefined ones. If you bring up the, your mail command and just do a search on script job. Yes, there. Uh, script job. As you can see, I've been here before. Uh, in my first attempt to do this video. So if you come down here, these are all the events that can have that the script jobs can use. And there's all these conditions. So you can use an event or a condition. And these are even additional events that are for whatever reason under I haven't figured that part out yet, but regardless, there it is. And so the form of script job is actually pretty easy. When you create a script job, that script job is going to have an ID number. That's how Maya identifies it. And that is why we have this global int. It is going to capture the ID number of this script job. So when we create the script job, you know, we give the little carrots. And if you are familiar with mail scripting, you've seen this a lot. Basically it says um, that this global int is going to be uh, the return value of try this again. It will be the return value of this uh, uh, mail command. It says evaluate this mail command, return the result, and then we're going to capture it with this this uh, int, this global int. So uh, the script job is going to wait for a uh, selection changed event. So basically every time the selection change happens it's going to call this procedure. Now notice that this is slightly different than up here. This is IKFK switch. This is auto IKFK switch. Why is there a different one? Well, um, again we haven't been using this at the office but I wanted to show you guys because I promised that I was going to do it this way and then so I'll just type it up real quick and it didn't work because it was constantly uh, trying to go the other direction the way it works now is you have your IK controller and you hit the switch and it goes to FK 
and you have the FK controller, you do the switch, it goes to the IK. When you're doing it automatically, you want to switch to FK when you grab the FK controller. And when you go to IK, you want to switch to IK when you grab the IK controller. So the, the solution is backwards compared to how we're doing it now. So basically I just mo I made a copy of it and I modified it to do it in reverse order. And again, this is where it comes in handy to have everything broken down in the procs. Because all I had to do was rewrite this little proc, make a couple of additions, or a couple of changes, and everything worked. Imagine this was one big, huge, long procedure. And I've seen some people write code that way. And then you're like, oh, that works great, but I also need to do it the other way around under certain circumstances. And you got to copy the whole thing. It's ridiculous. Here, it's just one little proc. I mean, a couple of modifications to it. Everything else works just fine. So when you actually run the script job and the selection is changed, it's going to trigger this proc. And then this last proc is just basically to kill the script job. Uh, that's important because you want to be able to kill it before you start another one, as an example. Um, you always want to have an ability to kill the script jobs because they can really start cluttering up your memory and, and your performance, especially if you have the same one being duplicated over and over and over again. As you can see here, the first thing we do is we look to see if it already exists before we create it. And when we, when we delete it, right here we set that integer to zero which basically says there's no script job and so we can actually run this if I just run that script job there and so now I'm in IK boom I'm now in FK now the only bad thing is that the IK handle won't follow it but if you click it snaps into place and we're golden and it is the only way it could be any better is if the um, IK controller actually moved with uh, the FK control and it doesn't currently do that I have seen recently a really cool IKFK switching um, where it was all wired into the rig and it actually did do it, it had to do with manipulating constraints uh, 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 technical director from uh, the get one of the guys that worked on Kung Fu Panda posted it up on area it was really brilliant um, I, again it's pros and cons but um, that's about the only thing that I can see that would probably make this better is if you can add that functionality to it but as you can see it works rather well even uh, automatically so oops That's a word bug. Anywho. So that's it for this video. On the next two videos, we're going to talk about some advanced features that we added. And again, this is one of the reasons why we prefer the system because doing everything in Mel gives us the flexibility of making modifications that if everything was just wired in the rig or something like that would be more difficult. So we'll see you on the next one.